Um, <laughs> and I think what we'll do is when we get to the names of the character, just read your character's name, your name, and then where you are from. So this is, Sounds are we good. ready? To start? Are we ready? I'm going to start. Follow Star by Dwayne Yancey, copyright 16, all rights reserved. Follow Her Star, a different kind of Christmas story. A 12 year old girl in the United States, disappointed that her mother couldn't afford to celebrate Christmas, runs away from home in search of Santa Claus. Along the way, she meets a series of characters and eventually join the search for her as she makes her way north eventually winding up in Churchill, Manitoba. While this appears to take a fractured fairy tale approach, the girl meets three people named Goldie, Frank, and Murray. There's a shepherd out tending his flock and so forth. The end conveys the message that Christmas isn't about Santa Claus at all. There's also a talking moose, three talking sheep who steal a farm truck, a police car, and a talking polar bear. The cast of 14 to 16, depending on doubles, Four males, four males and six to eight non-gender. One of those females is a 12 year old. One of the non-gender roles must be able to play a horn. My name is Kate Cash and I'm reading stage directions. Um, hi, I am Ella Kennedy. I'm gonna be playing Happenstance Holiday um, and I am from Hamilton, Ontario. I am Carolyn Ziegler. I am reading Mary, the mother, and I am from Roanoke, Virginia. My name is Emily, and I am from Hamilton, Ontario, or I live in Hamilton, Ontario, and I am playing Goldie, a prostitute who befriends happenstance and then searches for her, for her. Oh, I'm Frank, and uh, I'm from Hamilton also but uh, sometimes I'm not. Anyway, have fun. What's your real name? Oh, I'm Mason. <laughs> I am Bill Armstrong. I shall be playing Murray, or I should say I shall be. <laughs> Yay. I am Trina Yancey, uh, playing Angel Lord, a TV news announcer. I'm from Fincastle, Virginia. I'm Owen Lapsley. I'm from Hamilton, Ontario, and I'm playing sheep number one. I'm Giselle McGee. I'm playing sheep number two, and I'm from Hamilton, Ontario. I'm Mayor Coe. I am playing sheep number three, and I am just outside of Hamilton, Ontario. Yeah, I'm uh, Frederick Goss. I'm out of Paris, Texas, and I am playing Shep. I'm Arlene Thomas, and I am playing Moose, a talking moose, who's apparently from Manitoba. But you are from? <laughs> but I'm from Kitchener, <laughs> not Manitoba, <laughs> which is in Ontario, not Manitoba. <laughs> and you're not a moose, yeah, we got it. <laughs> and I'm a moose, quiet, Brian. It's <laughs> a critic. I am uh, Tim Wood, and I'm playing the Canadian Police. All of it? I, I'm assuming so, yes. Okay. Uh, I'm Will Walker out of Paris, Texas, and I'll be playing Sheriff Yule. Polar Bear will be played by Scott Cooper, who is in Waterloo, Ontario. There's also Officer Gabriel. I'm Officer Gabriel. My name is Brian Otto. I'm from Waterloo, Ontario, but... 45 minutes from Hamilton, but I grew up in Massachusetts and I went to university in North Carolina for you Southerners. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Follow Her Star by Dwayne Yancey. A girl of 12 appears on stage. If there's a curtain, she's in front of it. She looks around, somewhat confused, but curious. She is disappointed, but determined to find the answer. Why didn't Santa Claus come this year? 
Happen Sans looks around, then runs off stage and exits. From off stage, we hear Happen Sans' mother, Mariel, screams. <laughs> if there's a, it comes up from one. On one part of the stage, if we must see anything at all, we see a living room. It's a small room, sparsely appointed. Mary is a single mother, and there's simply not much money to afford furnishings. There is no Christmas decorations in sight. Mary runs on stage, frantic, holding a piece of paper in her hand. Happy, happy, are you here? Happy, happy, where are you? Answer me, happenstance. Mary runs to the door and shouts out. Happenstance, happenstance. Mary runs outside. We hear her shouting in the distance. Then she runs back inside. She's terrified. Something awful has happened. She looks again at the piece of paper. Her hand is trembling. She finds the phone and frantically dials 911. Uh, hello? My daughter's run away from home. She left me a note. You've got to help me, please. Lights down. Scene two. In the darkness, we hear a train rumbling. The lights come up to reveal the inside of a boxcar. In one corner, we see Happenstance sitting, waiting, shivering in the cold. She has a backpack with her. She's eating from a can of beans with a fork. In the other corner, we see a hobo sleeping. This is Frank. In time, he opens his eyes and spots Happenstance. He's confused and bleary-eyed. Am I dead? I beg your pardon? I said, am I dead? I guess not if I were dead and you were an angel. You wouldn't be begging my pardon. I'd be begging yours. I'm not an angel. No, I guess not. No wings. There's one giveaway. Or one of them round shiny things. Um, what do you call them? Halos, halos. You don't got no halo. Thought you was one, though. An angel, that is, not a halo. <laughs> Sorry. A devil, then? What? They say the devil can take many forms. I thought I met a devil once. He had smoke coming out of his ears and everything. Turned out he was just a regular hobo, except he had the habit of putting his smokes under his hat. And one of them was still lit. <laughs> oh, yes. Sorry, not a devil either. Say, that ain't a pitchfork you got there, is it? Little miniature one? What? This? No, it's, it's a fork. <sighs> Can't be too sure. Well, it's more of a spork, really. Oh, a spork. <laughs> oh, you might be the devil then. What? Sporks? Them things are unnatural, unholy. It's just a piece of plastic. Exactly. The Lord intended forks and spoons to be two separate things. It's doctorate. I know, because that's what the preacher told us down at the mission. You can't get your eats till you hear the preaching. That's the rule. Leastways, that's what I thought he said. Something about how we'd come up to a fork in the road and we'd have to make some choosing. Nobody ever comes to a spork in the road. Wouldn't know what to do if I did. Be like one of them traffic roundabout things. <laughs> They're the work of the devil too. Well, I like them because it means I only have to carry one thing. Gotta travel light. True. You got yourself a point there. Just little tiny points. I like to say, stick a spork in it. It's done. Oh, well, <laughs> beans are cold anyway. Frank. No, just beans. Mums is the one with hot dogs in them are too expensive. No, I mean, I'm Frank. Figured if you were an angel, you'd already know who I was. But I'm pretty sure now that you're not. Leastways, ain't never seen no angel be eating beans before. Figured if we was gonna ride together, we'd ought to at least be properly introduced. Me, I'm Frank. Frankly speaking, that is. Well, I'm Happenstance. Happenstance? 
That's a funny name. Well, tell me about it. <laughs> oh, I would, Seth, I can't. It ain't my story, it's yours. Well, n not really. Mom said she named me because that kind of thing just happened. She could have named me Miracle, but I guess it was more of a happenstance than a miracle. Or an accident. Oh. Now that's a terrible thing to say, even if it's true. Okay, happenstance. Happenstance. That is too many of what of them symbols, or maybe syllabuses. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting them all mixed up. Anything. It's too many of them. I can't tell you. Can I just call you happy? No. I hate being called happy. Do it yourself. Easier to write your name on your bell door if you got fewer letters. If I was you, I'd be happy. Or maybe just hap. But I'm not happy. I'm happenstance. There's a difference. Yep. One's got more syllables. Me, I'm just symbol. Frank. Middle initial N. Very short. Last name short too, but I just go by Frank. That's the shortest of all. Or maybe it's King Frank. Not sure what the etiquette is nowadays. Got voted as king once. King of the hobo court back in the E somewheres. Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, it might have been. Or maybe Nathasda, I don't know. One of them Bible towns. Strange thing to be voted king. One day they're making a fuss over you and the next day, pfft, you're back out on the rails. Steaming it, scruffing it like everyone else. Kind of humbling in a way. I guess I'm still a king in a way. King of the road. Ah, <laughs> I wouldn't, what I wouldn't give to hear old Roger Miller sing that one one more time. <laughs> you know Roger Miller? I uh, never heard of him. Oh, you're definitely not an angel then. I bet Roger Miller's up there serenading him. Say, how old are you anyway? I'm almost 13. Almost 13? Okay. So you're 12? Yeah. None of this new math? Nope. For sure. Um, is something wrong? I'm supposed to be doing something. Like what? That's just it. I can't remember. I know it's something though. I'm sure it'll come to you later. Probably after you get home. That's how it always happens to me. That's it! That's what? Home. I'm supposed to get you home. Rule 14 of the National Hobo Convention, back in 89, 1889 that is, in St. Louis, they passed 16 rules. The Lord only had 10. I guess hobo's a little more complicated. <laughs> Number 14. Help all runaway children and try to induce them to return home. Induce. I think that's a 50 cent word for get. Oh. Ego, upon my honor as a hobo, I'm supposed to induce you to go home. Well, I'm going home. Oh, well, that was easy. Well, maybe I am still a king. <laughs> as soon as I find Santa Claus. Santa Claus? Yeah, you know, the old fellow, Whitebeard, comes at Christmas with presents. Or he's supposed to come for Christmas anyway. Ain't you a little old to be believing in Santa Claus? Oh, I know all about those mall Santas completely fake. I'm looking for the real Santa. The real one, huh? Yep, the one and only. And where do you think you're gonna find this real Santa? Where else? The North Pole. The North Pole? Where's that? Um, I'm pretty sure it's at the North Pole. You mean the North Pole, North Pole? Yeah. I thought it might be one of those new high-end specialty stores. Nope. Top of the world, North Pole. Don't think trains go that far. That's all right. I figured I'd ride it as far as I can, then hitch a ride the rest of the way. Probably a good plan. Might need to be hitching a, with a dog sled, though. <laughs> I'll just have to play it by ear. 
Me, I don't have no plan. I just see where life takes me. Or Canadian Pacific Railway. <laughs> kind of all the same, if you ask me. We're slowing down. So we are. Why are we slowing down? Well, trains do that sort of thing. They stop, they start, they slow down, they speed up. They go every which way. Well, not side to side. The only time they do that is when it's getting ready to tip over. Let me give you a tip. You don't want to be in a box car that's tipping over. <laughs> hey, that rhymed or something. Or one of those grammar words. <laughs> I wonder where we are. One time, I fell asleep in a boxcar in Charleston. And you know where I woke up? Oh, where's that? Still Charleston. <laughs> Expecting one was West Virginia and the other was South Carolina. Confused the heck out of me till somebody explained the difference to me. They ought to be a law against that or something. It looks like we're in a switching yard somewhere. Oh, got to be careful of the bulls then. I don't see any farm animals. No, not them kind of bulls. Bulls is the railroad men. They'll come around and put you off the train. <laughs> they say if you want to ride a train, you got to see at mark Amtrak, except <laughs> except ways there's a catch. What's that? Oh, you don't want no Amtrak. They'll make you do something that goes against the code. What's that? Well, what else? They'll make you pay. Well, I probably don't even have enough money for that anyway. I don't get an allowance anymore. Not since it's just me and my mom. That's why you gotta know how to read the signs. Do you know the signs? You mean like, no trespassing, um, danger, no, do not enter. No, I mean the hobo signs. Like a cat, means a nice old lady lives here. Means you could probably get a free meal if you act real nice. Or a cross means you can get some angel food. What's angel food? That's free food, but you got to either hear a sermon or give one. Never caught it straight there. No. Oh. We all got our secret signs too. Every one of us. Mine's a crow. On account, I'm a king. <laughs> What's yours? What? Oh, um, I don't know. I don't have one. Oh. Everybody's got to have a secret sign. It's how we let the other hobos know where we've been. Kind of like Kilroy was here. Never met the fellow, but let me tell you, he has been everywhere, man. Always one step ahead of me. Oh, well, I still don't have one. Well, you see, now that's the problem then. It's kind of like the code. I mean, the code is the code, if you catch my drift. It's like the law, except we hobos don't really have laws, but we do have codes. And the code says you gotta have a sign. It's how we help each other. That's the part of the hobo code too. If you leave a sign somewhere, hobos gotta help you. Uh, Help you get where you're going. Help you find a place to sleep. Help you find a place to eat. Help you stay out of the, of the jailhouse. So, if you're gonna be hoboing, even if it's just hoboing back home, you gotta have a sign. Otherwise, see, you're not really a hobo, and then nobody's gonna help you. So you see, you just need a sign. Oh, well. I guess mine's the North Star, then. The North Star. Haven't heard that one before. That's a good one. Don't know how people are going to know it's the North Star, though. 
guess because there ain't really a South Star or an East Star or a West Star. I wonder why that is. I don't know. I just know the North Star is over the North Pole and that's where Santa lives. So if I want to find Santa, I, I need to follow the North Star. Good point. I reckon, except for rule 14 thing, now we ought to have ourselves a proper talk about that. As king, I suppose I could just issue some kind of royal decree, but hoboing don't work like that. Wish it did sometimes, though. I, King Frank, by the power vested in me, by the hobo convention, hereby order and obtain what... The train lurches to a halt. What? You're leaving? But I ain't done ordering or retaining you. We're not moving anymore. Can't get to the North Pole if we're not moving. Happen Sands jumps out of the boxcar and exit. Frank keeps talking, not realizing she's gone. True that. You never know what's going to happen when you stop. Sometimes they hook you up to another train. Sometimes they'll put you off on the siding and just let you sit there. That's kind of the beauty of it. You close your eyes and one town, you never know where you are. <laughs> Long as it's a different name. None of that Charleston foolishness. You think the country could do better than that. You think we'd have enough names to go around. Jacksonville, now there's another one. You know how many Jacksonvilles we got? Or well, Springfields. Springfield might be the worst, actually. Or, well, hey, where's she? Probably went to the mission. Hots and caught. <laughs> Gotta get some angel food. Nothing wrong with that. Well, except for the preaching. Might do the girl some good, though. Maybe she'll, maybe they'll send her back home where she belongs. They'll probably straighten her out. Uh, about the sport, too. Scene three at Happen Sansa's house. Mary is meeting with the police officer investigating Happenstance disappearance, Officer Gabriel. This isn't like her. What would make her run away like that? Kids can uh, run away for lots of reasons, ma'am. It, it happens. I don't know what could have gotten into her. Where would she have gone? Well, ma'am, from the looks of this note, um, well, she's gone to find Santa Claus. What does that even mean anyway? Well, I think it's meant to uh, either be read as a kind of allegory or you can read it literally. It depends on your interpretation, I suppose. And how do you interpret it? I interpret it to mean that your daughter has run away from home. Ma'am. Well, I know that, but can you find her? I need to find out some more information first, ma'am. Uh, yes, of course, anything. Does she have a cell phone? A, a phone? No, why? If she had a phone, we could attempt to track it. Uh, she wanted one. I know she should have one, but I just couldn't afford it. Oh God, I should have gotten her one anyway. No, it, it, it's all right, ma'am. There's no use looking behind. Just look ahead. Well, I know she's been upset lately, but I have no idea what she was this upset. Why didn't she say anything? What was, um, what was she upset about, ma'am? Well, everything. Uh, I don't know. It's been really hard on her, with her father, um, her stepfather and, and me, and having to move. I thought she was taking it well, well, as well as anyone could, <laughs> then... Then what, ma'am? Well, I don't know. The past few weeks, I, I, I guess since Christmas. Yes, ma'am. Go on. Well, I told her not to expect a Christmas this year. I just wasn't in any mood to celebrate anything. And I couldn't afford to get her anything anyway. I thought she understood, but I, I guess she didn't. Because on Christmas morning, she just couldn't seem to understand why there wasn't one. She kept asking why Santa Claus hadn't come. 
she's how old, ma'am? Uh, 12. She, she's 12. And she still believes in Santa Claus? Well, I don't know. She's always had an active imagination. Mm, maybe too active. Do you think you can find her? We'll do our very best, ma'am. Where do you think she's gone? Where would she go? I don't know, ma'am. But I'll tell you what I think. Uh, what's that? I think she's gone to find Santa Claus. You can't be serious. I think she is. And that's what counts. Um, so what are you going to do? Everything I can, ma'am. Everything I can. Scene four, the place, the bad side of a Chicago, the wrong side of the tracks, near the actual tracks. Goldie, a woman dressed in a slinky dress, leans against the wall. Nearby, Murray blows on a horn. A saxophone, a trumpet, whatever he can manage. Murray wears sunglasses, even though it's nighttime. He starts off the play only able to make noise and gets progressively better through the show. Whew. Right now, he's making noise. On the ground in front of him is a hat for money. Murray finishes song and awaits to come. Murray looks at Goldie. She looks at Murray. Finally, she tosses a coin his way. Murray cocks his head as if expecting instructions. Fine. Here's another. Murray nods. that so you don't play, right? Murray nods. I swear. You're like a jukebox in reverse. Five minutes this time, okay? Five minutes. Murray nods and starts counting down the time. As he does so, happens Sass enters. She seems lost, or at least looking for something. She approaches Murray. Um, excuse me, can you help me? Murray nods towards Goldie. Happens Sass approaches Goldie. Um, excuse me, can you help me? <laughs> what kind of help do you want? I'm kind of lost. <laughs> Join the club. Lots of lost souls down here in this part of town. Just don't join my club. I got this corner cornered. Well, except for Murray over there. Between him and me, you might call this the uh, entertainment district. Well, I'm trying to catch a train. <laughs> Lord, child, you are lost. Train station's uptown, that away. I'm not looking for the train station, just a train. <laughs> I uh, kind of think they go together. <laughs> what are you doing around this part of town anyway? Chicago's not a place to be wandering around at night alone. Heck, sometimes even in the daylight, it's not enough. Well, I got off the train I was on because it stopped and all I had left was my box of cookies and some instant milk, but I'm saving those for Santa. So I went to find something to eat, but I didn't have any money. Uh, but I found this restaurant where they were throwing out old food, so I thought I might be able to scavenge some things, but it's hard to eat a whole head of lettuce, and it was mostly rotten anyways. By then, I was tired, and there weren't any stars out by the day anyways, and the wind was blowing so hard, I found this underpass, and it was out of all the wind, so I went to sleep there, and I guess I slept all day, because when I woke up, it was dark, and the city lights were so bright, and I can't see the stars now, so I don't know which way is north. Whoa, and whoa, I whoa, whoa, You ate a head of rotten lettuce? No, it... Oh, good, I was gonna say, poor thing. Ooh. I only ate half of it. Oh. Here, do you want the rest? Happen Sands produces a lettuce head from her backpack. It's taking up a lot of space anyways. Round things are very hard to pack. <laughs> I bet that's why Santa only brings packages that are square or rectangular. You never see any round packages. Ever notice that? You're living on rotten lettuce? No, I'm living on a train. If I can ever find my way back to it. Why are you living on a train? Because it's going north. Why are you going north? Oh, never mind that. Murray, 
We gotta get this poor girl something to eat. Murray blows a short answer on his The equivalent of yes. They call me Goldie because I have a heart of gold. Not that that's a cliche or anything. Well, go on, Murray, give her some money. Murray blows a short answer on the phone in the form of a question. Well, I sure haven't made anything tonight. Murray blows a short answer on his horn. <laughs> Ad and forlorn. Ah, oh, never mind. Goldie takes the money out of her cleavage. Here, take this. Guess it really does come from the heart. <laughs> Not like I'm gonna be making any change anyway. Murray blows uh. sad note. Goldie hands happen sans the money. Now you go in there and get yourself something to eat, okay? You tell them Goldie sent ya. Oh, okay, thanks. Merry Christmas. Happen Sans exits happily. Merry Christmas. What? Wait, that was last week. Murray looks at Goldie. Oh, whatever. Go ahead, play all you want. I don't care. Nobody's coming down here tonight anyway. Murray blasts an enthusiastic song from his horn. Maybe it's a Christmas song. Maybe it's not. Goldie shows at a passing car. Oh, Goldie shouts at a passing car. Hey, mister, you like what you see? Suddenly, blue lights start flashing. Perhaps uh -oh. a uh -oh. we, we hear a crackle of police radio noises. Scene five, Goldie and Murray are sitting in a jail cell. You idiot. Murray shrugs. You stupid idiot. Murray shrugs. Of all the idiotic things. Murray shrugs. You have one job. How can you screw something up that's so simple as one job? Murray shrugs. Don't you know you're supposed to have a business license to be a street musician? <sighs> I'd just given that girl all your money instead of mine. None of this ever would have happened. Scene six, Happenstance's house. Officer Gabriel is still there with Mary. Do you mind if I look around in her room? Sure, go ahead. But what are you looking for? I'm not sure. So how will you look for her? I mean, how do you even find somebody who's gone missing? Well, first we'll check all the obvious places, the bus station, the homeless shelter. Do, do you think we'll find her there? And we'll check the truck stops out by the interstate. Truck stops? My happenstance wouldn't go to a truck stop, would she? If someone's running away from home, they need to travel somehow. Oh, God, a truck stop. Officer Gabriel picks up one of Happenstance's school books. This is one of her school books? Y yes, why? Did it come with pages missing? Well, I don't know, why? World geography. Do you know what I notice? What's that? Some of the pages with maps are torn up. Well, what do you think that means? I think it probably means you'll have to pay the school some money for a damaged school book. Oh. Uh. Hard to teach world geography if you don't have a map of the United States. Oh. And Canada. Ah. Uh. Uh and the North Pole. But uh, how would she? Like I said, truck stops. Offhand, I'm guessing the Alaska Highway. Oh my God. 
There's another one. Well, that's for science class. Introduction to astronomy. Mm -hmm. uh, mine is a uh, star chart for the Northern Hemisphere. Well, why would she need a star chart? Because the Alaska Highway only goes so far. Oh, no. Well, I think I have all I need now. Well, so you're going to look for her now. You're, you're going to look for her everywhere, right? Please tell me you're going to look everywhere. No, ma'am. I'm not going to look everywhere. Well, why not? Why wouldn't you? I, do, I don't understand. Why aren't you going to look everywhere? I think we only need to look in one place. Well, why is that? What's the one place? The North Pole. Goldie and Murray still sitting in the holding cell, scene eight. Maybe we can tell them you weren't really asking for money. Maybe we can tell them you just found out all that money. Maybe we can tell them it wasn't even your hat. <laughs> Maybe we could tell them it was somebody else's hat. Maybe we could tell them it was Frosty the Snowman's hat. <laughs> Maybe we could tell them, wait a minute. Why am I doing all the work here? Don't you have anything to say? Murray shrugs. Oh, I think you're taking the thing about you have the right to be silent a little too far. Murray shrugs. I don't see how I gotta be the brains behind this operation anyway. I could tell them that it wasn't my money to start with, that I was just, well, okay, may, maybe best not to admit that either. So what am I even gonna do here, huh? What am I doing here, huh? Answer me that. Hey, God, God, I wanna file habeas corpus. That's Latin if you don't know. It means you have the body. And I do have the body. Guard enters. Pipe down, lady. Oh, no, lady. And I'm not piping down till I see a lawyer. He's the next step over. Oh, seeing another client? No, waiting on someone to spring his bail. What? They arrested a lawyer? Chicago, ma'am. Preventative measure. Preventative for what? In case he might run for public office. Oh. Now move over. Gotta make room in here for one more. Frank enters. All right, buddy. In you go. Guard pushes Frank into the cell. Hey. So what are we getting out of here? I want to see a judge. No problem. Got a couple right over here. Between you and me, they'll probably be here longer than you will be. Guard exits. Evening, ma'am, sir. Frank King at your service. Or is it King Frank? In which case, you'd be at my service. Either way, I'll be frank with you. I'm frank. Goldie, that's Murray. He doesn't have much to say. The accommodations seem sound. Just a little more stationary than I'm accustomed to. Oh, that's a shame. No turndown service either, I hear. <laughs> I like the sound of rolling wheels, the rocking sway of the rail. Now that's a lullaby for an honest man, a free man on the open road. A man who does not owe the world a thing, although I've been known to take the occasional handout, especially if there's food involved. Yeah, well, you'll get some food in here, if they keep you long enough. Any preaching? No preaching. Good. I do not like the preaching. Puts me right to sleep. Then I miss out on the eating. Preacher man says cannot live by... Preacher's man says, man cannot live by bread alone. But one night I slept right through feeding line and all that was left was some biscuits. And the preacher man was right. You cannot live on bread alone. 
you at least need a little jelly, preferably grape. None of this mixed fruit business. I got my standards. So uh, what are you in for? Just a few nights, I hope. I mean, what did they arrest you for? <laughs> oh, that. I was just doing the Lord's work. Apparently, that's a crime here. Although it is Chicago, so you never can tell. And uh, how exactly were you doing this Lord's work? Why, I was giving that young fellow a chance to forgive me. You know, forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And I did pick up a few things at the mission. Apparently, the railroad police don't know their scripture because they weren't in a very forgiving mood. You were trespassing on the railroad. Camped out in a boxcar. I hardly call that trespassing. But thing you know, they're want ne but next thing you know, they're warning me about this and they're warning me about that. And I'm telling them I don't even know nobody named Miranda. And well, anyway, here I am. If it's all the same to you, I'm just gonna bunk down here. I don't like to be too high off the ground. Suit yourself. Frank pulls some old newspapers out of his clothes and starts laying them on the floor. What are you doing? Always sleep on clean sheets. Proven fact, it makes you smarter. It's called osmosis. I think the Wizard of Oz invented it. All the news just soaks right in. Go ahead, ask me anything about current affairs. I may not be very well read, but I'm well soaked in. Oh, I can imagine. Of course, sometimes if you sleep on it wrong, it only soaks skin deep. One time I woke up and had a sports pages smack on my forehead. Preacher man down at the mission thought it was a mark of the beast. Instead, it was just a box score for the Cubs. Six runs, six hits, six errors, six, six, six. Hey, what's that? I think it's called a box score. On account, I slept in the box. <laughs> or a box car. Everything's connected. Man, everything. Those people who say that you need to think outside the box, they don't know what they're talking about. You start doing that, and poof, the whole world might turn around in the end. Or at least, It'll get mighty cold. No, I mean, what's that on the newspaper? Crossword puzzle? Them things is tricky. You can't think out of the box with those either. No, I mean the picture. Goldie picks up the newspaper. It's that girl. It's what girl? Goldie shows the paper to Murray. Is that the girl? What girl? Murray gives the musical response. <laughs> It's that girl! What girl? Goldie shows him the newspaper. Hey! I met that, that girl! <laughs> she was outside the club asking where she could catch a train. She rode here on a boxcar with me. A freight train, of course! Why didn't I think of that? Or, as I prefer to think of it, the club car. Police are advising people throughout the Midwest to be on the lookout for a 12-year-old girl who happens, who has run away from home, apparently in search of Santa Claus. Authorities believe Happenstance Holiday is headed north on a route that could take her to the start of the Alaska Highway near Dawson Creek, British Columbia? That's crazy! Yup. Ought to be going to the North Pole. Won't find Santa Claus in England. British Columbia is not in England. Well, excuse me, the United Kingdom. Told you I was well soaked in. Murray takes the newspaper from Goldie and reads it. That poor girl. She didn't know much about the hoboing. She didn't know she was supposed to make a... She didn't know I was supposed to make sure she went back home. Rule 14, it's the rule. All alone out there? I kind of messed up. She got away before I could talk to her into it. I had no idea. Otherwise, I would have... 
Murray points to something in the paper. What? Goldie reads. Anyone with information on happenstance's whereabouts is asked to contact, contact the local police. There is a substantial reward offered for her safe return. Did you say reward? A substantial reward. We shouldn't do it for the reward. <laughs> money just weighs you down. Unless, of course, it's folding money. <laughs> Speak for yourself. By the authority vested in me, King Strike the a reading of a play. I do hereby play. solemnly swear off any and all interest in any reward in the noble quest mm -hmm. we are about to undertake. Whoa, 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 wait. What's this noble quest business? Rule 14. Wouldn't be much of a king if I didn't follow the rules, now would I? So, you're going to find her? I am pledged. I suppose I should too. Hot of gold and all that. <laughs> I do feel kind of responsible. Plus, the money won't hurt. <laughs> Murray makes musical sound. What's that? <laughs> Murray makes another musical sound. All right, Murray's in. Happenstance, we are on our way. There's just one teeny problem. What's that? We're still in jail. Oh, that. Yeah, that. Guard enters. Guard enters. All right, everybody, it's your lucky day. Hasn't been so far. You're all free to go. Free? Free as a bird? What's going on? Maybe an earthquake happened and all the doors fell off. I don't know. All I know is they said, come here, down here and let you all go. That you'd all make Bond. Bond? James Bond? How about that? I'm not just a hobo. I'm a secret agent. Not that kind of Bond. He's got an evil twin? Now there's a plot twist. <laughs> and I didn't even know. So who put up Bond for us? It's a miracle. That's it. This is it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Actually, it's the Miracle Brothers Law Firm. They do a lot of pro bono work. But you don't know which one? Nope. Just it's a miracle of miracles. Well, come on, boys. Let's hit the road. We got work to do. Just better not be the work that you put in here in the first place. Work. I don't like the sound of that. No, no siree, not one bit. That's one of them four-letter words. Murray makes a gesture. Wait, we can't go yet. Why not? We're gonna go rescue the girl, rule 14. Murray needs his horn back. Oh, right. Guard produces the horn, hands it to Murray, who blows a note or two. All better. Murray blows another note. <laughs> All right, then. Off we go. Happenstance, here we come, wherever you are. <laughs> Goldie, Frank, and Murray exit, with Murray playing a sound, perhaps even a simple copyright-free Christmas song. Guard shakes his head. <laughs> in the rail yard in Chicago, it's nighttime. Happen Sans is looking around, trying to figure out which train to catch. Hmm. This is more complicated than it was back home. We just had one train there. How am I supposed to figure out which one of these is going north? The lights are too bright to read my star map, and what do some of these names even mean, anyway? C, S, X, B, N, S, F? What are they? How am I supposed to know where they even go? I wonder what this one is. It's pretty. It's red. A good Christmas color. C, P. I wonder what that means. She starts reading the side of the train. She's up close, so she can't see it all at once. 
Quebec and add Canadian, Canadian Pacific. This is it. This is the one. I'll just have to hope that it doesn't go all the way to the Pacific. Scene 10. Happenstance's house. Officer Gabriel is setting up a video camera. Mary is upset and not really paying attention to the camera. Then Gabriel, that Gabriel is fiddling with. I, I don't understand why you're not looking for her. We're doing everything we can, ma'am. Mary looks out the window. But you're still here, and she's out there somewhere. Where could she be? We have alerted every law enforcement agency between here and British Columbia, ma'am. British Columbia? It's where the Alaska Highway starts, ma'am. Most runaways, we have no idea where they're going. Here we do. I'm sure we'll find her before she gets there. But how? We just need someone to spot her, ma'am. She has to travel somehow. Now, just look into this camera for me, ma'am. What's that for? Uh, I've lined up some television interviews. Television interviews? But I don't want to be on television. I just want my daughter back. This is a slow time of year for news. Stations are trying to do all they can to fill airtime. All you need to do is talk to them for about 30 seconds. This way, we'll get Happenstance's face out there before millions of people. Well, I, I don't know. I, I can't, I, I don't know what to say. Just talk about your daughter, ma'am. They'll ask very simple questions. Just be yourself. Well, I, I've never been good in front of a crowd. Well, think of it as a crowd. Just think of it as talking to one person. Now, put this in your ear. Gabriel hands Mary an earpiece. What's this? It's an earpiece, so you can hear them. And put this on. Gabriel hands Mary a small microphone. Well, I really don't know about this. Now, this first one is a station in Minnesota. Well, Minnesota? But that's... Between here and British Columbia. We want to cover every possible route. But how would she get all the way to Minnesota? That's something we can ask her when we find her. Now, you'll be talking to the evening anchor. Her name is Angel Allord. Now, when she comes on, just look at this little red light and answer her questions. At some appropriate point here, Gabriel calls the TV station on the cell phone. I, I don't know. Oh God, I'm so nervous. Can you do this for your daughter? Mary takes a deep breath. All right. All right, then. Someone answers on the other end. Hello, this is Officer Gabriel again with the missing girl case. We're ready on our end. Scene 11. At night in the Chicago rail yard, Goldie, Frank, and Murray look for a train. So you actually ride these things? From Maine to California, I am the king of hobos. Been to all 48 states I have. Well, I did sleep all the way through Iowa. <laughs> I reckon I was there, so. You know, there are 50 states, right? Oh, Alaska and Hawaii do not count. If you can't get there by train, it ain't worth going to. Now, if they could build a train over the ocean, that'd be something, now wouldn't it? Kind of like going over like contraction <laughs> on your way into New Orleans, except it goes on and on and on. Frank! Oh. Yes, ma'am? Will you just be quiet and help us find a train? Trains are all around us. I can see that. I mean the right train. Oh, that. Gotta use our intuition. That's a fancy word for using your noggin. Well, use your noggin more than you're talking, okay? We don't want anybody to catch us out here. 
You don't hear Murray flapping his gums all the time, now do ya? Murray blows, Murray blows his horn. <laughs> Stop that! Somebody might hear us! I got a confession to make. Oh, a confession. Do I look like a priest to you? I've never really done this sort of thing before. Oh, like I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> Murray blows his horn. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean you haven't done this sort of thing before? Are you telling me you're not a real hobo? Oh, I'm real all right. <laughs> I'm as real as it gets. So real I never picked a direction before. Usually I just hop on board and see where life takes me. Of course, um, that one at a time, the train just, of course that one time the train just sat there in the sideline for a month and a half without going anywhere. I thought it was just a real smooth ride. <laughs> of course, the scenery never changed. I, I just figured it was somewhere in Kansas, though. The mountains in the background kind of gave it away, though. Well, uh, let me break it to you, Frank. We're not in Kansas anymore. Murray blows his horn. We're in Chicago, and we're trying to find that girl. Now, if she's trying to go to the North Pole, what train would she have taken? Can you use your hobo noggin to figure that out? Well, I think she'd be taking this one right here. Oh, really? And how can you be so sure? Well, for one thing, look at what's attached to the side of this boxcar. A star? Yep. Clear as day. Or night, if you want to get technical. That's her mark, all right. So the North Pole right here, and that's the little dipper up there. And you can see all that. It's a sign. It looks like chicken scratch to me. That's because you don't read hobo. You gotta know what all of this means. And just what does all that scribble mean? It means we just need to follow her star. How do you even know she put it there? Anybody could have done that. I'm not even sure that's a star. Well, there is one way to know. A sure way, a certain way, a way that there will be, that will point the way. The way of truth, the way of light, the way of the world, the way of our young runaway heroine. And what way is that? I done told you, it's a that way. But how do you know? Frank picks up a spork off the ground. Easy. She dropped one of her sporks. A spork? That's what we got to go on? You might even say, we've come to a spork in the road. Murray gives a final blast of his horn. <laughs> Here come the bulls. And I don't mean the Chicago bulls, neither. Come on, the train's starting to leave. Goldie, Frank, and Murray exit. Scene 12. Up in Sansa's house, Officer Gabriel stands by the camera about to signal Mary. Okay, we're live in three, two. Gabriel gives a silent go. The TV anchor woman, Angel O Lord, appears on a different part of the stage. Our next story is called Unhappy Holiday. It's about a 12-year-old girl who has run away from home, apparently in hopes of finding Santa Claus. Authorities say happenstance, happy holiday, might be headed through the Twin Cities. So joining us now is live, now live is the girl's mother, Mary Holiday. Thank you, Ms. Holiday. I'm sure this is a very trying time for your family. Uh, um, yes. He hello? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Ms. Holiday. Could you tell us a bit about your daughter? What would prompt a 12-year-old to run away in search of Santa Claus? Well, I don't know. I just want my daughter back, please. If you've seen her, please, somebody out there. Yes, ma'am. I'm sure people will, but can you tell us... Isn't 12 years old a little old to be believing in Santa Claus? Well, I guess. 
You've got to understand, Happy's always been a very sweet child, a, a very quiet child. She's never really had many friends. So she's always played make-believe. I guess the Santa thing is just part of that. I always figured she'd grow out of it, but I, I guess she didn't. And now this, please, please, if, if someone can just find her. I see. So why now? Did something happen to prompt this? Well, um, th things have been really uh, hard lately. And, and well, I think that's all I want to say about that. I see. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us about her? Um, well, well, just that I love her very much, and I want her home, and, oh, there's, there's one thing you should know. What's that? She hates the name Happy. She's a very serious child. A very serious child who believes in make-believe. Well, oh, yes, but she's very serious about... Well, thank you, Ms. Holliday, for taking time to join us. We hope your daughter is found and returns home safely soon. Uh, um, thanks. I if you see her, please. All right, to recap. Very uh, what? Oh, sorry. To recap, authorities say to be on the on the lookout for 12-year-old happenstance holiday who has run away from home in search of Santa Claus. She is described as being five feet tall with blonde hair and blue eyes and wearing glasses. If you see her, please call your local police department immediately. Coming up next, we'll check in with sports. Weekend sports anchor Zeke Israel will tell us about Sunday's Vikings <clears throat> game and Angel indicates that she's getting a news bulletin in. Perhaps she touches her earpiece or refers to a new piece of paper coming in front of her. Wait, we have some breaking news coming in. A Canadian Pacific freight train has derailed in northwestern Minnesota. Authorities say several tanker cars are burning. It's unclear at this time whether any hazardous chemicals are involved. We'll keep you posted as we learn more. And now we'll be back after this word from our sponsors. That's it? I is it over? That one is. All right. Let's see who we have next. Scene 13. In somewhere in rural northwestern Minnesota, we hear noises, fire crackling, sirens blazing, the lights of emergency vehicles flash. Happenstance stumbles on stage as if having stumbled down an embankment. She is scratched up and injured. She staggers and then collapses on stage. End of Act One. Scene one, act two. Somewhere in rural northwestern Minnesota, Happenstance is laying where she collapsed at the end of act one, except now she's surrounded by sheep, talking sheep, three of the woolly ones. Oh, this doesn't look good. <laughs> is she sleeping? I don't think she's sleeping. Her eyes are closed. She must be sleeping. Why is she sleeping out here? I think she's dead. She's not dead. I don't think she's dead. Is she dead? She's not dead. I told you she wasn't dead. She's just sleeping. I, I think she's hurt. Oh, she's hurt. So she might be dead soon. Possibly. So sad. And we never even got a chance to know you. Where'd she come from? I mean, probably from up there. Oh, that doesn't look good. Why are all those train cars on their side? Burning mostly, it looks like. She looks cold. Doesn't she look cold to you? 
I don't know why humans don't just grow wool like we They seem pretty helpless, actually. Well, this one is certainly helpless right now. So, what should we do? We've never had a person just show up like this before. What else can we do? We should let Shep know. Shep? That boy's as dumb as a rock. He thinks he's taking care of us, but we're really the ones taking care of him. True. I think he mostly comes out here to skate on that pond. And knock that black thing around. It's called a puck. That's a silly name for a ball. <laughs> it's not a ball. It's a puck. She's one of his kind. He'll know what to do with her. He won't be back until morning. He always goes away at night. That's when the coyotes come out. It's also when they lose the light and they can't play anymore. I think it's because he's afraid of them. Really? I did hear him talking about them. He said they were big and tough and mean and really good ice skaters, too. Coyotes on ice skates? <laughs> I'd be afraid of them, too. Enough about coyotes. I'd be afraid of them, too. I should go find Shep. All by yourself? It's got to be done. But what about the coyotes? And what about us? What should we do? What else? Keep her warm. Oh. All right. Here goes nothing. I wish humans could understand what we say. Ba. 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 Sheep one exits. Sheep two and three, look at happenstance. You want to take that side and I'll take this one? Sure. Just remember one thing. What's that? Keep your back to her. Because that's where all our wool is. Because that way you can keep an eye out for coyotes. Oh. Especially the ones on ice skates. Sheep two and sheep three cuddle up against happenstance and go to sleep. Sheep three especially keeps an eye open. Scene two, Goldie, Frank, and Murray stand by the railroad tracks. They have escaped the wreckage. Goldie and Frank are looking at the train cars on fire. Murray wanders off to the side. Oh, dear God! Oh, the humanity! The humanity! Fire! All those train cars are all up in smoke, up in the fire! It's like the Hindenburg or the Titanic, the wreck of old 97. All rolled into one. We gotta get up there. Somehow we gotta get up there. You know, they say there was a load of canaries on the old 97. They say that the wreck knocked them loose and they all were flying around, just singing and singing. Will you shut up and be serious? Oh, I am. I never joke about canaries. Don't you understand? That girl is up there somewhere. Oh. Yeah. Oh, she could be up there, trapped, and nobody knows to look for her. Nobody but us. Murray blows his horn. Not now, Murray. We've got to think. Think. How do we get up there without anyone catching us? Murray blows his horn again and gestures to something in the snow. I said not now, Murray, and be quiet. Someone might hear, hear you. What are those? Quarter notes, most likely. That's because you hear them down in the French Quarter. <laughs> or maybe because you're supposed to be put a quarter in his hat. <laughs> Me, I don't accept quarters. That would be like begging, and I'm not a beggar. But I do take handouts. Now that is different. That's what you call entitlement. On account that I have a title, me being the king, you know. Those are tracks. Well, of course they're tracks. That's what trains go on. They've got them all across the country. Not those tracks. Those tracks in the snow. Oh. She came this way. And 
then went down that way. Down that embankment. That's a long way down. Yep. But it's got to be done. Yep. This is going to be tricky. Oh, you ought to try it in heels. <laughs> Murray blows his horn and Goldie, Frank, and Murray ease their way down the embankment. Scene three. In the field, Habensance is sitting up, being tended by Shep, a young farmer wearing a hockey jersey. The three sheep are gathered around. Shep, by the way, is very dumb. How many fingers am I holding up? Uh, five. Five? Yeah, one pointing up, and then the other four are pointing back at you. <laughs> Shep steadies his hand. Oh, that's a good one. I'll have to remember that one, if I can. It's, it's hard to remember too much if you get knocked in the head by a hockey stick. Ask her if she's all right. Ask her if she's hurt. Ask her if she's dead. Keep one and two. Stare at sheep three disapprovingly. What? It's a test question. So, uh, where'd you come from? Sheep two and three sigh, because that's not the question they wanted. It's close enough. I hope so, anyway. Happenstance points toward the railroad tracks. Up there. Oh. Oh, did this stork brought you? Oh, good grief. Not the stork, the train. Oh, I thought uh, we don't have any storks around here. Not that I, not that I know of anyway. Wild geese mostly. <laughs> I stand corrected. He's dumber than a rock. My apologies to all the rocks I have offended. Ask her if you can help her. Ask her if she's in any pain. Ask her what she's doing here. So, uh, what are you doing here? Finally! Um, I'm following the North Star. Oh, you're, you're too late. What do you mean I'm too late? Yeah, what's he mean she's too late? I thought it was right up there. Or over there. I get turned around sometimes. Oh, uh, they, they've been gone for years. Who? What are you talking about? Shh. Yeah, what's he talking about? We need to pay attention. Uh, the Minnesota North Stars, the, the hockey team. They moved to Dallas. Now they're just the Stars and, and in Dallas. But that's in Texas. Uh, they kind of stole our team. Oh. Here he goes with the hockey again. Is that all that boy thinks about? It's all that boy thinks about. He's not very good at it. Not very good at anything. Yeah, well, we got the wild now. Uh, that's what our team's called now, uh, the Minnesota Wild. <laughs> Stop talking about hockey and ask her if she needs help. Oh, so where is... Oh, pretty good, uh, but, but you know who I'm really afraid of this year? What? The Coyotes. Coyotes? Coyotes? Uh, the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, they beat us last year in the playoffs. Oh. They tough and, and mean and... Oh, really? Really, really good, good ice good. skaters, too. <laughs> a hockey team? We've been living in fear of a hockey team? Uh, apparently it's not a very, it's a very good one, though. It's a hockey team in the desert. How could they, good can they be? How do they skate on sand, anyway? I think I'm lost. Oh, she's lost. Maybe she's run away from home. Ask her if she's run away from home. Ask her if you can help her. Yeah, where are you trying to go? Is that being helpful? I think that's being helpful. I'm trying to get to the North Pole. The North Pole? Is that anything like a barber pole? Maybe that's where humans go to get sheared. I don't like getting sheared. Very irregular. Well, I, I guess it's, uh, I guess it's that away. Oh, okay. I'm not sure that's what you should have told her. 
He wanted him to ask her how he could help. So, uh, why do you want to go to the North Pole? A valid question. It doesn't look like she needs to be sheared. Because cause I need to talk to Santa Claus. Oh, okay. I, well, that makes sense. No, it doesn't. I'm pretty certain Santa is a mythological figure. Remember when we were in the live nativity down at the church? Definitely no Santa Claus in that story. <laughs> Uh, North Pole's a long way away, though. I have a map. Oh, she has a map. A map stick. No, it's not. It's not? Or I did. I think I lost it up there when the train rolled over. I lost all my stuff. Oh. No, Lawson. A map to a mythological figure seems of dubious value anyway. Plus... I know how to follow the star. That line sounds very familiar. Uh, whose star? Santa's star. Who else? On account of it's right over the North Pole. I'm pretty sure that's not how the story goes. Oh, huh. And I never thought about that. I just always thought of the North Stars were a hockey team. I never knew where the name came from. <laughs> Something's not right here. The way I remember the story, there was a star, but it wasn't over the North Pole. It was on the side of the church. Right Sorry. over the head. It was very bright. It kept getting in my eyes. So all those people came to see us. <laughs> One day you're a star, the next day they put you out to pasture. Literally, show business is hard. Shh, we need to listen. I could, uh, give you a ride. What? This doesn't sound like a good idea. To the North Pole? <laughs> no, not, not the North Pole. <laughs> wow. Well, how far then? What's happening? I don't understand what's happening. Shh. I need to get to the Alaska Highway. If I can get to the Alaska Highway, I can get to Alaska. And if I'm in Alaska, I'm sure I can find the way to get to the North Pole. But first, I have to get to the Alaska Highway. Oh, I, I can't take you to Alaska. <laughs> that, that's a long way away. Well, can you get me to Canada? The Alaska Highway starts in Canada. Canada? Oh, oh sure, that's easy. It's just a few counties away. Really? If I still had my map, I'd know where Canada is, but I'm sure if I can get to Canada, I can find it. And if not, well, there's always... She well, you know. I think this is such a good idea. I think we made a mistake when we asked Shep for help. What were we supposed to do? Just wait around and hope somebody else came along? The girl was hurt. She needed somebody to help her. And now she's taking a ride from a stranger. Technically, he could be more of a good Samaritan. What? I picked up a few things down at the church, too. Well, I suppose I could do that. We gotta hurry. Oh, why is that? Huh, Wilds are on TV tonight. They're playing the Coyotes. <laughs> Come on. Uh, hang on. Let me just do one thing. Happened Sam Straws and Star in the Snow. All right, I'm ready. Step and happen, stance, exit. What do you think now? I think she's following the wrong star. Scene four. Goldie, Frank, and Murray make their way down the embankment into the field. It's cold. <clears throat> I'm not dressed for the cold. I'm not dressed for much of anything. Oh, I'm not even dressed for success. Well... Maybe on the street corner. <laughs> That's why I always carry newspapers with me. A good <laughs> newspaper can inform you, entertain you, and it can also keep you warm. I'm assuming, of course, you've got some matches. Um, uh, well, we don't have time to stop and start a fire. We need to follow that girl's tracks. They say people nowadays are getting their news off their phones. I don't see how that works. It seems awfully hard to stuff a newspaper through a little holes in the earpiece. Murray blows his horn. 
<laughs> Murray, what do you see? Murray nods. Well, I'll be. It's radiant tracks. Keep one, two, and three, enter. Now what? I don't think those are reindeer. Looks like we were wrong after all. We could have just waited around for help to arrive. I'm not sure this is help. Huh, I can't find the tracks anymore. They just disappear into all these others. That's not a ram's horn that one fellow has, is it? If so, that's rather disturbing. It only makes sense. Reindeer can't go all around the world in one night without making at least one pit stop. I'd watch where you step if I was you. Will you shut up about the reindeer? Vasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen. I forgot the rest of them. Eh. I wonder if they're the same ones if old Santa's given them some new names. There are no reindeer! You're telling me all the all tracks all end, right? Frank looks up and sees the sheep. Oh. <laughs> Funniest looking reindeer I ever saw. <laughs> Awkward. Never mind the farm animals. Focus on the girl. I wonder if that's the same girl. Must be. How many girls out here could there be? <laughs> well, we know of at least one other one. Another one? Where? You remember that time Shep brought that girl home with him? Oh, that girl! They went down behind the barn and they... Kissing! I definitely remember him saying something about kissing. I think what he actually said was she hit him in the kisser. High sticking penalty. Oh, well, that would explain how he lost all those teeth. I always wondered how kissing could be so dangerous. Things went from him checking her out to her checking him out. Bam! Right into the penalty box. You know, it almost looks like those reindeer are talking to one another. They're not reindeer! They're sheep! Santa switched the sheep now? Well, that'll change a lot of the stories, won't it? Forget about the sheep! Hey, I resent that. Shouldn't we resent that? Shh, we might learn something. All I've learned is how easy it is to pull the wool over some people's eyes. And they don't even have any wool. Look, there's a hobo sign. A star. She was definitely here. There are two sets of tracks going this way. One looks like hers. The other looks like it might be somebody else's. No sporks, though but that's definitely her hobo sign. Somebody found her. Somebody rescued her. Or maybe somebody kidnapped her. <gasps> but then they disappear. And now there's just tire tracks. Uh, she rode off with somebody. Somebody found her and she rode off with them. Maybe she found Santa Claus after all. She did not find Santa Claus. Or Santa Claus found her. That would explain all the reindeer tracks. Who would she ride off with out here in the middle of nowhere? The middle of nowhere? She sure has that wrong. This is rural Minnesota. Middle of nowhere. That would be somewhere in North Dakota. <laughs> Just a little east of Minot, I'd reckon. If only reindeer could talk. Maybe these fellows would tell us. How many times do I have to tell you? They're not reindeer! Hey, so which one of you is Rudolph? <laughs> Scene five. Just <laughs> over the border in Canada, in the providence of Manitoba, Captain Sands waves goodbye to Shep, who has just dropped her off on the American side. Thanks for the lift. Wow. So I'm in Canada. It looks just the same. I kind of thought maybe it would be different. On the map, it's a different color. Oh, well, maybe it's the snow. <laughs> now what? I wish I still had my map. Let's see. North ought to be 
right over um from off stage we hear a voice welcome to canada there Wh who said that moose enters i did what you're you're a you're, you're a, a canadian you're a moose some moose are Canadian. Some Canadians are moose, like a Venn diagram. But no, you, you're, you're a talking moose. Oui, I can also speak in French. Would you prefer that? What? I can also speak in several First Nations languages. Would you prefer one of those? No, that's fine. I only speak English. Americans. 50 stars and 13 stripes on your flag, but only one language. Rather boring, if you ask me. Oh, but what do I know? I'm just a moose. Anyway, welcome to Canada, province of Manitoba. Good day. Moose starts to leave. Wait, come back. We? Oui? I need your help. Really? Nobody's ever asked my help before. I need directions. Directions. <laughs> right. North, south, east, west. There you go. No, I mean something more specific than that. Oh, right. Uh, Montreal and Toronto that way. Winnipeg that way. Calgary and Vancouver over there. Edmonton more up there. No, I, I mean... Oh, did I mess up? Oh, 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 the Maritime Provinces? Oh, okay, uh, way over there. And oh, Saskatchewan. Oh, I forgot all about Saskatchewan. How could I forget Saskatchewan? Oh, it's all right, though. I mean, everybody else does. I mean, there's really not much there. It's, you know, it's, they do call it the Gap for a reason. No, not that. The Alaska Highway. Which way is that? Oh, well, they ought to call it the Yukon Highway, if you ask me. I mean, it doesn't seem right to call it the Alaska Highway when most of it is in Canada. I, I don't care what it's called. I just need to know how to get to it. Oh. I had a map, but I kind of lost it. I see. Well, let me think. Alaska Highway. Alaska Highway. I really don't know much about highways, other than to stay off them. People don't much like it when they drive their foreign little cars into the legs of a 1,500 pound moose. I guess not. You know that thing about the irresistible force against the immovable object? Uh, yeah. Turns out, we're not immovable after all. Oh. We tend to fall over, flop, crush, splat. Kind of hard on the knees, too. Oh, well, I don't drive. <laughs> Neither do they after that. I see. So, can you help me get to the Alaska Highway anyway? I don't know. I might have to ask around. Why do you want to go to the... 
Ooh, to Alaska anyway. Well, <laughs> I don't want to go to Alaska. Oh, well. Best not to get on the Alaska Highway then. I want to go to the North Pole. The North Pole. Well, why didn't you say so? Well, I figured if I can get to Alaska, the North Pole can't be far away. It doesn't look that far on a map anyway. When I still had a map. Hmm. What? I need to think. Okay. Hmm. What is it? I told you. I need to think. Oh, oh, sorry. I may have a big head, but I think slow. I'm kind of like that in school sometimes. <laughs> mm. I may be just a moose, but this is just a suggestion, mind you. What's that? If you want to go to the North Pole, why don't you just go to the North Pole? Well, I'm trying. That's why I'm trying to get to the Alaska Highway. No. I mean, why don't you just go north? You don't have to, of course. I mean, it's just an idea. Well, forget I said anything. Um, what do you mean? No, I mean, I was just trying to be helpful. You know, please, please don't shoot me for trying to be helpful. I'm not going to shoot you. Oh, well, you know, that's a relief. Are you sure you're an American? I, mean, I thought you Americans would shoot anything. What did you mean when you asked, why don't I just go north? You're here. North Pole is there. Shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Simple geometry, maybe trigonometry. I always get those confused. We moose aren't very good at math. But uh, are there roads going there? Oh, no roads. Um, well, train tracks? I was riding a train until, well, until I lost my map. No, no trains. Not a lot of anything, actually. Just miles and miles of Manitoba. And there are other places beyond that. Then how do I get there? Walk. I can't walk to the North Pole. <laughs> well, why, why, why would I mean, if I were going there? Well, duh, you're a moose. Big strides can cover more ground. Well, I'm not a moose. Unfortunate. The world would be a better place if everyone was a moose. Well, I need a ride. Oh. I could help, but I'm just a moose. Actually. What? You could give me a ride. But I don't own a car. I don't think I'd fit. The horns are awkward. Not that kind of ride. On your back. Oh. I don't think anybody's ever done that before. We're not really beasts of burden, you know. Well, you could be. I could just sit on your back. And I could hold on to your horns. Oh. They're not steering wheels, you know. But you know the way. So you definitely don't need to steer. And what else are you going to do? Just hang around here and be the welcoming committee? 
pretty much. Welcome to Canada. Have a good day, A. You'd be doing me a big favor. And you seem to want to be a helpful moose. Don't you want to be a helpful moose? Oh, I am Canadian. And our neighbor to be nice. Unless we're playing hockey and then we want to knock your teeth out. And you'd get to meet Santa Claus? Oh, I don't know about that. Maybe you could even pull his sleigh. Maybe that's why he didn't come this year. Maybe all the reindeer got sick. I bet one moose could dig the blaze of eight reindeer. Or nine if you count Rudolph. Dude. By any chance, does your nose light up? What? Never mind, forget I asked that. Uh, well, uh, the camel is a cousin of ours. So, will you do it? Mm, I can get you as far as Hudson's Bay. Oh, well, is that close to the North Pole? Probably. If not, maybe you could find someone else to take you. Oh. Well, can't exactly ride an iceberg, you know. I mean, that'd be too much like surfing. You need a California moose for that. I see. Oh, that was a joke, by the way. Well, I guess I'm not very good at those either. Oh, I get it. <laughs> so do we have a deal? I suppose. Hop on. Thanks. My name, by the way, is Happenstance. I'm Moose. Just Moose. Oh. But I can say it in several languages. I mean, there's Moose. And then in French, it's Elin. That has a certain ring to it, I think. I mean, the Latin name is Alces. Alces. Does that make any sense? I, mean, I guess we're like your New York. So good they had to name us twice. What are you doing? Uh, just drawing something in the snow. Come on, let's go. Moose and Happenstance exit. Scene six at Happenstance's house. Officer Gabriel is there with Mary. Gabriel is on the phone. I see. Are you certain? What is it? And you didn't find anything else? What? What did they find? Is there any chance that, well, you know, with, with the fire... Fire? What's going on? Tell me! Yes, I, uh, I understand. Well, I don't! Well, if you find anything else, let us know. Oh, dear God! Oh, um, th let me ask, have you searched the surrounding neighborhood, you know, in case she walked away? Scene seven, outside Shep's house, Goldie, Frank, and Murray preparing to knock on Shep's door. The three sheep are in the background looking on. All right, now just let me do the talking. Don't have to worry about Murray saying the wrong thing. <laughs> Murray blows his horn. What? Well Maybe a wrong note or two now and then. <clears throat> now, if anyone asks... Where... I'm a hobo, and he's a street musician, and you are a professional performer. Um, no. That's exactly why I need to do the talking. You're not a professional? We'll tell them we're astronomers. That's it, um, astronomers. That'll explain why we're out here in the middle of the night. Astronauts, just like I dream of Jeannie. We've landed, of course, and I found you in a bottle. <laughs> Not astronauts, astronomers. Ah, right. Those horoscope people. You know, I heard a rumor once that they were all just made up. Can you imagine such a thing? One day, one of the newspapers in Chicago publishes, Dewey defeats Truman. And the next thing you know, every single one of them is making up the future every day. I'll tell you the real reason Dewey didn't win that year. It's a whole lot of the decimal system. People don't like being told how to find their books anyway. How about 
You just nod. Yes, ma'am. But if it comes up, can you tell them I'm a king? Yeah, right. All right, let's do this. Murray, do you want to announce us? Murray blows his horn. Goldie frowns. What? I'm a king. I should have a royal entrance. Goldie Franks and Murray exit. The sheep step forward. This isn't going to work, is it? Probably not. They seem like well-meaning people. <laughs> That's one word for them. Well, maybe two. Depends on whether it's hyphenated. She's not in there. How do you know? Well, for one thing, he said he was going to take her to the border. This isn't the border, this is the farmhouse. True. Plus, there's only one set of tracks coming from back from the truck. So she's still out there. Somewhere. And Shep's the only person who knows where. So, we should wait for those people to talk Shep into taking them to her. No. No? You heard him. There's a hockey game on TV tonight. He will never leave that. I remember. The Coyotes. He does love his hockey. Shep's the only person who knows where she is. But he's not the only one who knows. We know. We do? The border. That seems pretty specific kind of a place. True. There's probably a sign. That means just one thing. We need to wait until after the game is over? Or we steal his truck and drive there ourselves. You're kidding, right? You saw her. She didn't have any wool at all. She might freeze to death while they're trying to talk to him. You've got a point. I'm not sure I like this truck idea. When farm animals get in a truck, they usually don't come back. We're not going to a market. We're going to the border. There's a difference. I see one potential problem. What's that? How can sheep drive a truck? Good question. Let's find out. Sheep exit. Scene eight, Happenstance's house. Gabriel comforts Mary. A train? She was riding on a train? That's what they think. They found some of her things in the wreck. But where is she? Where did she go? I don't know. It's a very remote area, but they assure me they're going to check the surrounding area. Oh, please, let them find her. Please. As soon as they can get an officer in the area. Well, how long will that be? I don't know. We're just lucky the railroad people recognized the name when they found it written on some of her belongings. I told you those TV interviews would pay off. Scene nine, Shep's house. He's watching a hockey game on television. Oh, hit him. Hit him up against the glass. Yes. Yes. Now take the shot. Take the shot. Oh. Oh, take it out. Take it out. Oh. Hurry, hurry. Oh, time's expired. Oh, man. Oh. A television announcer appears. At first, Shep doesn't pay attention, but then the announcement about happenstance gets his attention. And at the end of the first period, the score is Coyotes 1, Wild 0. We'll be back with more hockey action, but first this news break from Eyewitness Action News in Minneapolis. Authorities tonight are still looking for a runaway girl who is believed to be trying to get to the North Pole to find Santa Claus. Hey, hey, that's the girl. She is described as being. I know what she looks like. I, I, I saw her, that, that was her. If you see Happenstance Holiday, please contact authorities immediately. Oh, 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 watch the game. Do the right thing, watch the game, do the right thing, watch the game, do the right thing. Oh, oh, this is so hard. Oh, that's it. I'll set the TV on record. Oh, sometimes I am so smart. 
Jeff sets the TV to record and exits. In other news, firefighters are still battling the blaze that erupted when a Canadian Pacific freight train derailed in northwestern Minnesota. The fire has spread to one nearby piece of vegetation, so authorities say they are dealing with 12 tanker cars and one burning bush. Scene 10, the sheep are in Shep's truck. Oh! This is never going to work. Your feet don't reach the floor. It's unimportant. Evolution did not favor us with the opposable thumbs. I think those pedals have something to do with it. Or opposable feet, for that matter. I think if you push them down hard enough, it'll start. Or long legs, for that matter. Maybe if you got down there and I sat there and steered. Just everyone be quiet. I need to concentrate. Maybe if both of you got down there or... One of you could push on one pedal, and one could push on the other. Oh look, there's a picture of a ram. Maybe this truck was meant to be driven by sheep after all. Ugh. <laughs> Scene 11, Goldie, Frank, and Murray approach Shep's house. All right, so we're all agreed. I'm gonna knock on the door and- Shep bursts out. Gotta find that girl, gotta find that girl, gotta- Whoa! Whoa, well, who are you? <clears throat> We're astronomers. We're astronauts. Astronomers. Astrologists. Astronomers. Not supposed to say. It's top secret. Murray blows his horn. <laughs> We're from the college. I'm a king. A uh, king's college. The three of us. The three kings. <laughs> Well, two kings and a queen, but it's... <laughs> we were just out here looking at the stars. We were following one star in particular. And then we heard about a girl. A runaway girl? Pure happenstance. Oh, you know her too? Know who? The girl. I I'm gonna find her. So you seen her? Well, I know where she is, or, or was anyway. But come on. Oh, that's gonna be rough. But why is that? Isn't that your truck driving down the road without us? <gasps> what the? Murray blows his horn. <laughs> <laughs> Scene 12, the sheep are driving Chef's truck. Sheep two is steering. Sheep one is on the floorboards operating the pedals. Sheep three is on the passenger side. We're all going to die. Just be quiet and help steer. Oh, I don't need any help. This is fun. <laughs> lambs to the slaughter. We're all lambs to the slaughter. Oh, look at that nice man waving at us. <gasps> he must be waving us through customs. Step on it. I'm stepping, I'm stepping. We are all going to die. We are all going to die. I sure hope he raises that gate soon. <laughs> Lights out and we hear a crash. Scene 13, the TV anchor gives the news. And in other news tonight, a bizarre item from the state's northern border where a runaway farm truck driven by a flock of sheep crashed through a customs post and was last seen speeding into Manitoba. Well, that can't be true. Sounds like somebody's had a little too much of the holiday cheer. We'll be back after these messages from our sponsors. Scene 14, Shep with Goldie, Frank, and Murray. Shep's on the phone. Hello, 911? Yeah, I'm calling to report that my truck has been stolen. And, and I think I know who did it, too. Yeah, my own sheep. Hello? 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 They hung up on me. Scene 15 at the Happenstance's house. I don't care. I'm going to look for her myself. They assured me they'd be checking the neighborhood. I don't care. She's my daughter. If they found some of her things on that train, well, 
I want to be there. I need to be there. I understand. I don't care if I have to look in every barn in northern Minnesota by myself. I am going to do it. I'll be with you. You're coming with me? I'll always be there for you. You may not always know it, but I'll always be there for you. Scene 16. The sheep are driving the truck in the same configuration as before. Sheep two behind the wheel, sheep one on the floorboard, sheep three is the passenger, except... We're stopping. Why are we stopping? I don't know. The gas gauge is pointing to E. That must mean enough. <laughs> Maybe if I press harder on these pedals. It sure got us going before. Uh-oh. I think things are about to get worse. We're sitting still. How could things get worse? Don't look now, but... Okay. Don't look at what? What's going on? Police car. Maybe they'll help us. Maybe they'll arrest us. Oh no. We're going to the big house. Better the big house than the slaughterhouse. We've got to do something. I think we're supposed to show license and registration. Do you think our livestock tag will do? We're cooked. We're all going to be turned into gyros. Get out. What? You heard me. I thought we were supposed to stay in the vehicle. Not that door, the other one. You don't have to ask me more than once. The sheep clamor out of the vehicle on the passenger side. I've got a plan. Another one? It's not like the last one worked out so well. What's your plan? Around the back. Quick. What are we doing? What are we doing? This time I'm steering and you're working the pedals. The sheep exit around the back of the vehicle. Meanwhile, a Canadian police officer taps on the driver window. Hello? Hello? Anybody in there? What the? Hey, what are you doing? That's my car. You can't steal my We car. hear the siren and see the lights as the sheep speed off in a stolen Canadian police car. Scene 17, the sheep are driving a Canadian police car. Now sheep one steers, sheep three is on the pedal, and sheep two is in the passenger. You realize this is stealing. We're merely borrowing. We'll give it back. Eventually. I'm pretty sure at the church they were against this sort of thing. It's one of the ten deadly sins. Seven deadly sins. It was the Ten Commandments. <laughs> Whatever. And how did I wind up working the pedals anyway? That must mean that there's three of them that aren't really sins. Maybe this is one of them. Pedal to the metal. We've got to find that girl. Pedal to the metal. I'm giving it all I've got, Captain. Oh, I wonder what this does. Sheep 2 turns a button. Suddenly blue lights flash and a siren blares. Will you knock it off? I'm trying to concentrate. Hey, look! Everyone's pulling over for us. We'll really make some time now. Scene 18. A sheriff's office somewhere in rural northern Minnesota. Sh sheriff Yule hobbles in with a bad leg. Gabriel and Mary are there to meet with him. Do we have our sheriff? He's there. Sorry, my computer's being stupid. <clears throat> uh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Jingle keys, eh? Jingle bells, jingle bells. Excuse me, I'm Officer Gabriel. My department should have let you know we were coming. Just hold your one horse open sleigh. You can't just show up here out of the blue and toot your own horn and go ahead of the line. What do you think this is? Black Friday shopping? We got rules here, you know. I'm with the missing girl case. This is her mother. And you could be a partridge in a pear tree for all I care, can't you see? I have a constituent over there. What's wrong with your leg? Ah, uh, mistletoe. I, I beg your pardon? 
old war injury over in the Middle East. Carried my rocket launcher the wrong way, kind of blew my foot off. Just my toe, really. Ergo, mistletoe. mistletoe. Anyway, like I said, got to keep the voters happy. So, Chef, my boy, I understand somebody got on your naughty list, did they? Uh, yes, sir. I suppose they did, sir. You two can have some milk and cookies while you wait, if you want. This, this might take a while. So, what exactly did someone do to get on your naughty list, Chef? Well, they stole my truck. Well, that's no good, eh? Can't go dashing through the snow that way. What kind of Grinch would steal somebody's truck at Christmas? Ought to wait until all these New Year's. Don't they know we're shorthanded this time of year? First people out shopping for presents, now they're all returning presents. Maybe they just ought to give cash, you know? Nobody ever returns that. Anyway, let's get some paperwork going. Can't take anything on faith. So what kind of truck was it? Uh, a red one. All right, red. What shape red would you say it was? More like a rose or more like a cherry? Uh, more like a, a muddy old farm truck. I see. All right. Stolen truck, red, muddy. Stolen truck, red, muddy. Got to make a list and check it twice, you know. <laughs> Any witnesses? Uh. Yeah, all, all these people saw it. Yeah, we did. Plain as the nose on my face. Murray blows his horn. That's a trumpet. So, <laughs> who are all you people anyway? These, uh, your new farmhands? This one looks more like a, some kind of elf. Uh, they're professors. <laughs> What kind of professors? Uh, the, the college kind, I guess. <laughs> We're astronomers. We're astronauts. Astronomers. Astrologers. Astronomers. We're following a star. See, I, I told you they were smart people. <laughs> All righty then, three smart people. Wait, that won't fit on the line, stupid boxes. Good thing I'm using a pencil. <laughs> I'll just make that three, numeral three. What's a shorter word for smart? Smart, smart. It's just like a crossword puzzle. I told you, can't think outside the box for those. Wise, three wise men. Uh, we're all, not all men, you know. Try not to make my job any harder than it is, ma'am. So, sounds like more than just the mice were stirring. So, who do you think stole your truck? Oh, my sheep did. Your what? Uh, three of them. I only saw two. One was steering, the other was riding. Uh, I bet the other one was working the pedals. What are you, a bunch of fruitcakes? You expect me to think that a bunch of sheep stole your truck, eh? Oh, I wouldn't believe it either if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. Miracles happen, you know. Well, what to my wondering eye should appear? Sheep driving a truck? So tell me, you boys, uh, one elf, you been in the eggnog? I told them they shouldn't go to the police, that you'd never believe them. I should deck your halls, don't you know? Trying to come in here and pull the wool over my eyes like this. Uh, that would be one behind the wheel. <laughs> kind of had wool down all over its eyes, <laughs> which is very unusual for a reindeer. They weren't? Oh, never mind. What? Look, forget the stupid truck. We're trying to find that missing girl. Missing girl? Happenstance. Oh, it was quite a happenstance. I was just riding on the rails to Chicago when I met this girl. You saw my daughter? Where? When? What do you know? Did you talk to her? What did she say? Dash away, dash away, dash away, all of you. You've got to tell me. Please, tell me what you know. 
She was on the train. The one that derailed? Yeah, uh, I found her. She, she was out in the back pasture. You found her? Was she hurt? Where is she now? Oh, she was fine. She just asked me for a ride. A ride? Where? Uh, up to the border. I, I told her that's as far as I could take her. You took her to Canada? Was she okay? Please tell me she was okay. Well, she wanted to go to the North Pole, but I told her I couldn't go that far, so I just dropped her off at the border. I had to get back home to watch the game on TV. The wild birds and the coyotes. We were trying to follow her and find her, but... Then those dastardly sheep stole this boy's truck. We had to ride a tractor just to get there. When they say whatever blows your skirts up, they sure didn't have a tractor ride in mind. Murray blows his horn. <laughs> Be quiet. And to think, I started off doing this for a reward. It better be a very good one. Maybe even an eternal one. I don't think those sheep are going to get away any reward, though. Say, you don't think they were trying to find her, too, do you? Well, there you go. Sounds like he just pulled your roasted chestnuts out of the fire. Oh, God. What do we do now? Well, I don't know about you all, but I know what I'm going to do. What's that? I'm going to take a nap. A long winter's nap. Murray blows his horn, perhaps a few notes of Silent Night. <laughs> Scene 19, Manitoba, outside the town of Churchill, Captain Santa is riding on the moose. So, when I see Santa, I'm going to tell him he could probably retire those reindeer. I'd bet he'd eat around a lot better if he had a moose pulling his sleigh. Then, he wouldn't miss anybody's houses, like he did mine. How many times do I have to tell you we're not pack animals? But Santa's got the pack, probably a big one, too. Think of all the toys he has to deliver. And the population is growing, so he'd probably have to carry a lot more than he used to. <laughs> Maybe he needs a whole team of moose. Apparently more times than I have already. Maybe he could just use moose in Canada. And in other countries, he could use other animals. You know, like llamas in Bolivia, kangaroos in Australia, and the Loch Ness Monster in Scotland. <laughs> I don't really think there is such a thing. Oh, but there is. Santa brought me a movie once when I was little, and it had the Loch Ness Monster in it. Her name is Nessie. So I know she's real, or else Santa wouldn't have brought me the movie. Oh, I don't know about that, but there's one animal you might ask about Santa. What's that? Polar bear. Polar bear enters, a grumpy bear who doesn't like being a tourist attraction. Well, 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 what do we have here? It's a girl. Sure, it's not a baby seal. You know how I feel about baby seals. What are you looking at? You think I spend all day sitting around on icebergs drinking soda pop? Yeah, polar bears do not live on sugar water alone. Are we at the North Pole? Not the North Pole. Where are we then? Welcome to Churchill, Manitoba. Polar bear capital of the world. <laughs> so what's this one want, eh? Pictures. They all want to take pictures. Yeah. They think we're cute. Eh? They think we're cuddly. Then we chow down on a baby seal and suddenly we're not so cute and cuddly anymore. Mm. That's the truth, though, eh? People just don't like the truth. Very much, I, I don't think I have anything in my teeth, do I? Mm. Um... Can you get me to the North Pole? Uh, what's with this um, North Pole business? I told her I could get her as far as Hudson Bay. Here we are. I need to get to the North Pole. That is where Santa Claus lives, and I need to see Santa Claus. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just slow down just a minute. 
One thing at a time. Oh, I guess I'll be going on. Long way back to Winnipeg, and oh, my back is killing me. Eh, not so fast there, moose breath. You might have a return passenger going with you, uh, <laughs> unless I decide to eat her first. Uh, no. Relax, kid. I don't eat people. Uh, unless I mistake you for a seal. Then all bets are off. In any case, uh, first things first. The first thing you gotta know is uh, there's nothing at the North Pole. You wanna play tourist? Yeah, you can settle for looking at me. <laughs> Roar. <laughs> How's that? Now, would you prefer the smiley face polar bear? <laughs> yeah, that'll cost you. You can pay me in uh, fish if you want. Yeah, I'll find seals on my own. I just need to find Santa Claus. <laughs> well, you see, kid, uh, there's your second problem. What's, what's that? <sighs> Are they all this clueless? Yeah, I guess this explains uh, that whole climate change thing, doesn't it? Yeah. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, of course you don't. I'll bottom line it for you. There's no Santa Claus. What? Never was. Never will be. It's all a myth. Fairy tale? Well, maybe more of a elf tale. Yeah, some people get picky. Anyway, it's all, it's make-believe. Sorry to break it to you like that. But, but... I never understood everybody was so hung up on this Santa Claus anyway. He makes no sense to me. Some overweight man living in the Arctic with just his wife and a staff of vertically challenged factory workers is supposed to be in charge of making and delivering every toy on Christmas Day. <laughs> Sounds like a James Bond film to me. One of those uh, silly Roger Moore ones, too. But, but... So, unless you want to pay me in fish, take my picture. <laughs> yeah, just run along. Yeah, with your pet moose there. I'm not a pet. <sighs> is it worse than that? <laughs> she turns you into a farm animal? This is the wild subarctic. No room at the time at the end for farm animals here. It, what the? Polar bear is attracted by something. We hear a commotion off stage. Moose and happenstance turn to see what it is. We hear a siren and flashing police lights. We hear a car lurching to a halt, and suddenly the three sheep burst onto the stage. Did you have to blare that siren? It hurts my ears. It cleared out the traffic, didn't it? Well, you've got a point there. Was there traffic? I couldn't tell. I was down there on the floor. Not much to view there. And by the way, your feet kind of stink. The sheep noticed the polar bear with happenstance and the moose. Whoa, stop right there. That's her. And is that a polar bear? So what do you want? Ferocious. A cuddly. Take a pick. I think I'm going to give you some kind of special animal to animal discount. Distraction! Distraction! Over here! I'm a distraction! Yes. Yes, you certainly are. I'm trying to create a distraction so he won't eat her. Why does everyone think I'm going to eat them? Are any of you baby seals? <laughs> do you know any baby seals? The sheep Don't. shake their head no and mutter no. No. I don't think so. No, not me. No. <sighs> There's a rather uh, sheepish answer, don't you think? <laughs> you get it? Sheepish? <laughs> oh, God. And people think I don't have a sense of humor. Polar bear roars. Happens to answer. Uh, uh -huh. oh, uh, now, don't start getting all weepy on me, girl. Besides, it's sub zero here. Those tears will freeze to your face. She's crying. What's wrong with her? Did he hurt her? He better not have hurt her. Why is she crying? If he hurt her, I'm going all ninja sheep on him. Polar bear roars. 
Or... Assuming that's all right with you, of course. Why are you crying, little girl? Look at me, I'm just the moose. He, he said, there's no Santa Claus. Who said that? Uh, I did. But I know there is. There has to be. I've believed in him ever since I was little. I believed in him. And I believe I'm hungry. Well, that's certainly true. Oh, you poor dear. There, there. Please don't cry. I hate crying. <laughs> but what's Christmas even for if there's no Santa Claus? Oh. So, what's the question? I think it is. It appears to be the question. Oh. What? We know the answer to that. We do know the answer to that, don't we? We do. We do? You remember, we heard it when we were in that live nativity scene down at the church. Oh, that answer! Here, let me tell you a story. What kind of story? The best kind of story of all. A true story. All right. I'm just going to find a baby, a baby seal. If you made me a little cute or anything for tourists, you, you just let me know, eh? So, a long time ago, these sheep were out in their field one night when they saw a star. Scene 20, the sheriff's office, Shep Goldie, Frank Murray, Gabriel, Mary, and Sheriff Yule are waiting around. Sheriff Yule seems completely unconcerned. He's playing solitaire. It's been 12 days. The 12 days of Christmas. We need a miracle. We need an epiphany. But still, we are requiring an epiphany. <laughs> an idea of sorts. Or something of the nature of I when need you my train truck bag. Hi. <laughs> I told you it'll take some paperwork. But you said the Canadian police found it. True. Some mighty, some mighty good police work there, eh? You know, what they say. <laughs> Royal Canadian Mounted Police always get their man. But apparently not their sheep. Or my sheep. Nothing? Nothing. Well, I thought you were like, you know, <laughs> in charge of this investigation. The RCMP say they have no sign of her. A star. They need to be looking for a star. Whoa! What's that? What, what's that? Up in the sky. All those lights. Them? They're just the northern lights. I've never seen those before. I'm sure one of these astronomers here would be happy to explain them to you. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, they're lights, <clears throat> and they're in the north. The phone rings. Sheriff's office, Sheriff Yule speaking. What? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, here? Uh, your name's Gabriel, right? It's for you. Uh, who is it? What? what? Are you sure? What is it? Turn on the television. Is there a hockey game, Mom? Now, quick. W what's going on? <laughs> Sheriff Yule turns on the television. Angel O Lord appears. Good evening. I'm Angel O Lord, and I bring you good tidings of great joy. <laughs> we have a remarkable story developing tonight out of Churchill, Manitoba, a story which shall be for all people. I'm on the line with a Constable Moose of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Constable, what can you tell us?
Go on, you talk to her. <laughs> Mom? Uh, Merry Christmas. Lights out, end of play, more or less. <laughs> For the curtain call, Murray plays the public domain Christmas song, We Three Kings, on its horn while everyone <laughs> takes a bow. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Wait, I didn't realize I was muted for my last line. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was yelling at the phone and I couldn't understand why no one could hear me. Very upsetting. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't figure out. I was trying to un, uh, unmute and uh, start my video again and it wouldn't do it. It was such a good line Tiffany, because Tiffany, the moose was like it. trying not to be on camera because it's like a moose. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How, do you, how do you get, like, if I'm a moose, how do I get, like, an actor, like, really? Because that's, that's all I'm, like, somebody has to ride me for the whole show. That's awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Just to piggyback. Just to piggyback.